Hello my dears, it's me, Ordinary Girl Trying to Be Fabulous, and welcome to my channel, welcome to my subscribers, welcome to my new subscribers, and welcome to those of you who are not subscribed. If you are not subscribed and you enjoy my content, I hope you will consider doing so. And even if you don't enjoy my content, I hope you will consider subscribing because hey, why not? So today, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about books more because I enjoy reading. I enjoy reading an actual physical copy of a book. And today, we're going to talk about Snobs by Julian Fellows. I did want to tell you that I, after two years, I am almost done with Beautiful and Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I know, it's taking me long enough, huh? And also, I wanted to bring it up because it's probably the elephant in the room. I mean, at least I can see it. But you see, I have these red splotches all over my face. When I was planting a rose bush, I must have encountered some type of something or other that I was allergic to. Because it's on my hands. It's more on this one. So, you know, I encountered it. And then I probably went like that and wiped it all good on my face. So that's my lot until this and this and this gets better. Just, you know, but you know, I ain't got nothing weird going on. Just a allergic reaction or something. So today we are going to talk about the book Snobs by Julian Fellows. And... You know, uh, Julian Fellows is the author of Downton Abbey. He wrote and directed... Did he direct? Well, he was like... He was like the person in control of Downton Abbey. And that's my favorite TV show. Like, in the whole entire world. I have um, the... I've watched the series several times. I've watched the movies several times. I own the movies, I own the DVDs, I own books, um, it's just my favorite series. So Julian Fellows is one of my favorite authors. And so we're going to talk about this book, Snobs, today. And um, really good book by the way, if you need, if you need something to read. Um, so let's see, the storyline centers around Edith Lavery. Her mother's name is Stella. Most of the time her father is called Mr. Lavery and his name is either Keith or Kenneth. They don't really, they don't really, they usually just call him Mr. Lavery. And then there's Charles Broughton. He's Lord Charles Broughton and his parents are Googie and Tigger. Um, I'm sure they have legal names, but that's what they go by in the story. And the story is told by a narrator who is, you know, um, nobility up there with the, with the Broughtons. And he's also an actor. So he's like, he's like, you know, upper class and he's an actor and kind of common. So, um, Stella Lavery is a social climber and her husband and Stella, they're not poor, but they're not rich either. They're not in the same, um, class as Charles Broughton and his parents and his sister, Caroline. So, you know, in, um, process Edith has friends named Isabel and David who buy a house near Broughton House and they think that because they bought a house near this uh, old mansion that that will give them an in with the family and the person who finally gets an in with the family is Edith and her mother is the social climber. I mean, Edith wasn't, didn't grow up like that, but she, you know, had a season 
came out even though um she didn't like grow up in those circles so edith and charles date and they end up getting married um charles is quite stupid he, that's how he's described in the book he is quite stupid and but edith thinks that you know she totally deserves this she's like totally um this is like her total lot in life and this is what this is what she was born for and i think it's interesting because in downton abbey there's an edith and she's somewhat the antagonist many people are like team lady mary and they do not like edith at all and in this book edith lavery broughton ends up being the antagonist so it's interesting mr fellows if you could tell me if you have a certain if you feel a certain way about women named edith so um they charles and edith the date and they become engaged and um lady caroline charles's sister says basically uh, good luck to her because her brother's rather stupid his father is also stupid but you know he's very good with gossip and raunchy stories which kind of makes up for his stupidity and charles doesn't can't uh tell funny stories or raunchy stories so everyone just thinks he's stupid and they get married and in my in my thoughts you know while i was reading this i was thinking you know when when they're engaged um what do you buy for a woman who is going to be a lady and live in a beautiful house a beautiful historic house and have people to do everything for her practically i mean what do you what, what kind of wedding gift do you give to someone who is going to have people to serve her literally um and then the wedding you know royal people are going to attend this wedding the queen is invited to this wedding what kind of wedding do you throw when the queen of england is invited yes i know i know um the queen of england has passed this book i believe takes place in the 90s so um in this book she is very much alive but yeah what kind of wedding do you throw when royalty is invited i would imagine that like a backyard barbecue would not be acceptable and so um edith and charles get married and his mother doesn't really like edith because he can she can probably see through her but um like the the whole theme through the book that charles always states is that if he could marry one of his own kind he would and being quite the eligible bachelor being the heir to the family show he could have his choice of any of those women you know who were his his equal in sense and situation but he doesn't want them he wants edith for better or worse and then you know in this beautiful house they decide to film a period drama which is sort of like you know downton abbey when they use the beautiful high clare castle to film downton abbey but that's uh where this where the uh storyline the parallel stops so there's a handsome actor and he's beautiful and he's smart and he's charismatic and he's like got all this stuff going for him and edith is bored edith is bored of her husband um charles is lacking in certain areas of things 
And so, you know, she decides she sets her eyes on this handsome actor. See, the funny thing is, is that the handsome actor is going to think that Edith is going to advance him into the circles that she's in. And Edith thinks that she's going to be the wife of an A-list actor. Which, none of that happens because he's not an A-list actor. He's just a basic um, TV show actor who gets, you know, he's Z-list. And she's not, she's not in those circles. And especially when she leaves, she's not gonna get in the, not gonna be able to stay in those circles. So, you know, the whole story progresses and it's like everybody is like a social climber. Um, Lady Caroline is married to a man who is more common than Edith, but he is rude and awful and a snob and he treats Edith very poorly because Edith, you know, on the level, because even in this world, even though they're both common, he's more common than she is. So he doesn't like her. And yeah, so that's, that's the whole story. And I'm not going to tell you how it ends because you're going to have to read it. And if I told you how it ended, why would you read it? But I highly recommend it because it's a very good book. Um, I can tell you I don't like Edith in Downton Abbey. See, I wasn't I wasn't Team Edith in Downton Abbey. I didn't hate her, but I did want her to do well. In this book, Edith is the antagonist. Edith is looking out for Edith. And for some reason, Charles loves her and even though she's like run off with an actor, he is, he is just torn up without her. And his sister is instrumental in helping him, whether it's helping him get back together or helping um, them get apart because his mother, Gucci, see, is it Gucci or is it Googie? I have no idea. Doesn't like Edith. For, for a very good reason. I mean, because Edith broke the heart of her baby boy. Um, and wants Charles to divorce Edith. And, you know, marry this lovely, lovely lady um, who is in their, in their realm. And he doesn't want to because he, for some reason, he loves Edith. Doesn't want to let her go. And so does Edith use that to her advantage? Is it a good thing? I guess you'll just have to read it and find out. And I, I mean, I, I really, I really like it. Um, I like, I like British period dramas. And even though this like happened in the nineties, um, at least it seems like it happened in the 90s because uh, they didn't mention they didn't mention William being at the wedding or Catherine or anybody like that they so yeah it was probably in the 90s um so yeah I mean um Edith is my opinion Every, in this book, everybody's a snob, no matter where they are in the social strata. Edith is a snob. Edith thinks she's entitled to everything. Um, her mother is a snob. Her mother is the one who gave her uh, these delusions of grandeur. Her father is a social climbing banker. Um... And then, you know, Guji is a huge snob because, you know, she wants her son to marry 
well. And when you're, when you have that sort of responsibility, I guess you would want your child to marry well. But Guji doesn't want Edith around at all. And when Edith runs off with the actor, she doesn't ever want her to come back. But does she come back? Well, you'll just have to read it. You have to read it. And you have to tell me what you think of it. So, um, yeah. Everybody's a snob. No matter, no matter where they are in the social world. At least in this book. I mean, like, in my life, I don't think I'm a snob. But then maybe I am. So, yeah. I hope you read it. I really hope you do. And I hope you tell me how much you like it. And uh, I've got, um, I read Belgravia. I'm going to read that again. And I'm going to talk about it. And then I also have um, The Past Imperfect. I haven't read that yet. But I'm going to read that and we're going to talk about it. And then also, I finally, I'm near the end of Beautiful and Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It's only taken two years. So we'll, we'll talk about that real soon. Maybe next week. And um, so with that, I hope you read this book. I hope you um, talk about it. If you do, if you do read it, because there are like questions in the back of the book. There's like a discussion guide. If you do read it and you want to go through the discussion guide in another video, let me know. So um, we can do that. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you in the next video and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. I'd say hello to Annie. Where is Annie? There's a pee pee pause. Okay, so because this video has Annie in it, we're gonna. You see, there's an Annie banana. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get on with it. Okay, so.